Okay, so this is the start of a guide of how to modify a small case Denso hairpin alternator to reconfigure the state of windings from a star configuration to a delta configuration to double the output current. The type of alternator you're looking for is like this here. Um, you can generally distinguish them by the rear housing, the shape of the rear housing, the design of the plastic cover, and also the location of the um, regulator with respect to the output stud. Um, you might find some with the uh, regulator in a different location. Sometimes the stud may be pointing out of the rear as well rather than out the side of the case. But if the rear housing looks like this and the windings that you can see inside of it are a hairpin winding, then it is a small case hairpin alternator. However, there are a few different types of stator and rotor, and you need the version that's generally used in 150 to 160 amp alternators. Um, if you are not sure, Once you pull the rear housing off, um, you'll have access to the brush holder and then you can pull the brush holder out and double check the uh, resistance of the rotor winding. Um, the 150 to 160 amp should be 1.8 ohm and if it's the uh, smaller version, which is only rated for uh, 100 to 130 amps and can't be modified in the same way, um, it'll measure 2.2 ohms. So this is the brush housing here. The reason I choose to pull the brush housing off to measure it is because often the brushes won't make good contact and what you actually measure on your meter won't be correct. So once the brush housing is out, there's two contacts in here. And if you measure the resistance across them without spinning the alternator, because that will affect the readings, it should be 1.8 ohms. So that is a 150 amp assembly or 160 amp and can be modified to do 320 amps. Once you're at this stage, you're going to want to cut where the windings attach to the um, original rectifier. I'm um, not going to reuse this rectifier because it's not rated at high enough current. So if you just cut through them without snapping your cutters off. But you also want to make sure that the lead length you're keeping is long enough to be able to solder it to the new rectifier. If you've got one like in front of you, you'll, you'll see what I mean. They, they um, spot order them in such a way that they can actually be cut off and removed so that the rectifier can be replaced without having to replace the stator. Okay, so there's a cut. If they're not fully cut through, I can just cut them after or leave them off to get it out, so that's fine. Um, now you're going to pull the uh, rectifier off. This should no longer be connected to the housing apart from by the four screws, these two here and also the one through the regulator. This regulator is not going to be reused either because it's um, not suitable for my application. It comes off like that. Put that aside for now. Now, probably going to pull the um, case apart. That doesn't fit. I plan this well. Okay.
Uh, when retightening these, you're going to want to go in a like diagonal pattern, the same as you would with a um, a wheel on a car, or else the case will um, twist sideways and the bearings will be tight. You you would feel it as you do it back up again. But we'll probably get to that if my um, video actually includes reassembly. It probably won't. Um, the rear bearing isn't actually pressed into the rear housing, but they'll often get jammed in. Um, so you will need to use a puller to actually get it out. Um, it's about this time that I uh, generally engage safety squints because I uh, don't know how this is going to go. So that's the rear housing with the stator still stuck in it. So now you've gone up to this stage. Um, this may separate easily the first time around or you may need to um, persuade it a little bit. Generally if you give it just a few light taps around the outside. And then just gently lever it out evenly. Try it out like that. So I don't need that anymore for now. And this is where the modifications happen. Basically, this point here has three connections going to it. And each one of those runs to one, two, and three of these windings. And on the other side, it's the same. There's this point here, and each one of those, the opposite end, runs to one, two, and three. So each half of this is effectively an alternator of its own. What these windings are configured like is in a star configuration. So each one of these center points here is a center point, and then the windings run like this. And then each one of these windings has diodes on it. One side to ground and the other side to the positive. What you do to change this to get higher current from it is reconfigure that so that instead of being in a star configuration which basically puts the windings in series to increase the voltage at lower RPM is you change the windings to be in a delta configuration like that, that means that they are effectively in parallel rather than series, so that it'll do twice the current, hence 320 amp from a 160 amp alternator, but it takes more RPM to do it. So you cut the windings, add some links, and reconfigure it to turn that into that. And that's how you get 320 amps from a 150 to 160 amp alternator. That is for another video. And this is a wavy washer.